Hello everybody, I have got what I think is going to be an exciting episode today. In the store, you may have already noticed products like these, these emergency um, blackout light bulbs. Um, in researching them, I found out there's a lot of confusion about how they work. So what I wanted to do is clear some of that up for you um, and explain how they work. Um, some people basically think it's magic, how they know to turn on when the power goes out. But it turns out it's not really that complicated. Um, they come in a couple of different varieties, and I have looked um, at them and on the inside of several of them to understand them a little bit better. This is one of the better higher-end versions. These are made by GE. It both comes in um, a regular bulb configuration and a reflector bulb configuration. Um, one of the things you have on some of the higher-end ones is a little switch right here which allows you to effectively use it as a flashlight um, if it's fully charged. And they charge themselves when they're being used. So that's kind of cool. I like these reflector ones. You know, a lot of homes today use the can lights with reflectors. And so it's nice that they have one um, like that. I've used these in my own home. But what's actually inside of these? How do they work? Well, let's take it apart. There's nothing like taking it apart to understand how it works. So if we look inside, we have a diffuser on the top. Um, and then you see in this model has a little um, aluminum metal tray. And what's on top of that is the array of LEDs. Um, this little tray gives it some heat sink capability, which is why it's in there. Then there's a little curved circuit board. This is the brains of the operation. And then of course, there's a lithium ion battery that runs everything. And that's what's, um, that's what's inside of them. Now, one thing I wanted to point out to you, and this is gonna help us understand the mystery of how these things work to turn themselves on. Behind that little switch right in there is a little circuit board, and on there is a 75K um, resistor. And that's all this switch does. Um, when I took a look at it, it puts 75K between these two terminals of the light bulb. And that's what's actually turning it on. This other example I'm gonna show you here is minus the switch. I wanted to give us a, a more budget friendly option. This is one I actually picked up in Walmart um, I'll give you a link for some of these you can find on Amazon, too, if you want to look there. There's some very similar ones. But they have basically the same components, except no switch. So, diffuser on top, that stays the same. And this has an actually a little ceramic tray, which holds the arrays of the LEDs. And we'll get into that in just a minute. There's a little circular circuit board. Um, which runs it, and then in the middle of that circuit board is where this battery mounts. There's a little notch, and it's got to go in just the right way. There we go. That's what, how it mounts. So one of the things that I've found out from taking a look at these, um, the cheaper ones are less than half the price, like I said, though, you don't have the switch, not quite as good a build quality as these GE ones, um, but close. In testing them, I found they do not have the same runtime during a blackout as the GE ones. It's only about two thirds the runtime. So that's a little bit of a difference too in the quality. And I assume it has to do with these um, lithium ion batteries come in different capacities. They're probably using one with a little bit less capacity, which is cheaper. All right. So now the fun part, you can see I have already soldered on some uh, resistors here so that we can see kind of how this works. And I've got my power supply um, ready to go so that we can um, do this little demonstration. I'm going to go ahead and hook up to this. And 
there we go. So these LEDs are designed to have one set that work when it's in the emergency mode and another set that work when it's in the regular powered mode. The emergency ones are the ones on the inside. As you can see, there are two um, rings. All right, so I've already connected up to that inner ring um, 1.7 volts and it's not coming on. Now that's not a bad voltage to try testing this with because um, common LEDs, they have a forward threshold voltage of about 1.4 volts. In other words, you need that voltage drop requires you to have at least that much voltage before they'll turn on. Now, um, these are not red. These are white LEDs and they act a little differently. They have a little bit higher threshold voltage. It's around three volts um, is what will turn those on. So that works out great because these cells are about 3.7 volts. So that's perfect for this emergency configuration. So when it's running like that, it's running right off of this battery and it's running um, that inner ring. Now that inner ring is all hooked in parallel. That means that the all the anodes are connected together and all the cathodes are connected. If, or that also means all the positives are connected together, all the negatives are connected together. So, um, and they're all in parallel. And again, it has to be configured that way because it needs to run on that 3.7 volts. All right. So now let's take a look um, at that inner ring. I mean, not the inner ring, but the outer instead. So I've got that one pre-configured and they are hooked up in series. So that's completely different than how the other is hooked up. And I've already played with this, so I know what I'm connecting up. So this is the first one in that series. And as you can see, at the 3.4 volts that I've got there, it's not turning on. So something must be going on. All right, let's turn this up to six volts or thereabouts. Now, all of a sudden, it turns on. So these have a forward threshold voltage of six volts. Like I said, normal white LEDs have a forward voltage of three. So probably what's going on here is internally there are um, two LEDs in that little package that are hooked up in series. And that's why the voltage is six. Now, I know this one is the next one in the series, but notice it won't turn on. Anybody ahead of me? Anybody guess what I need to do to the voltage to get that one to turn on? Seeing how this one has a forward threshold voltage of six, and so does that one, and they're hooked in series. See if you're guessing ahead of me here. What if we turn this up to right around 12? Let's see if that will now light up too. Yeah, sure enough. But we can't get three. Why? We added another six volts to the threshold voltage. So now we need to get to 18. All right. Now we should be able to get three to light up. Yep, we did. Oh. Well, I'm a little over 18. Yeah, see now that one won't go. So what do we need to do? Let's try taking it to 24. Everyone remembers your multiplication table, right? And see how many we can get now. Yeah. We easily get four. Um, let's go up. Well, this particular one, it maxes out at right around 30. And that should get us about that many. 
So, um, and if I could keep going up, I could go all the way around the ring. So again, the reason that they're connected up in series is this is good from um, an efficiency standpoint. It's drawing the same current, which is probably 20 milliamps. And, but we, in series, we can now give it the 110 and have them all light up for that same 20 milliamps. If we had hooked them up in parallel, we would be needing 20 milliamps per ball or per LED. So obviously a lot more current draw. So that's why it's configured like that. The only downside to being configured like that is um, what happens if one of these burns out and it can happen or we get a bad solder joint because they're hooked up in series. That means the entire ring will no longer light and that would effectively be the end of the bulb. But um, that's usually not the case and that's a long time off. So we're going to get a lot more energy savings by um, configuring them this way by having them um, hook up. So for the next part of this video, what I'm going to be doing is going into much more detail. I've actually built a rig to demonstrate these in real time so that we can see how that works. Again, all, it, all that switch does internally is put a resistor across there. So if I take one and I do it, on it goes. And this is also true of the one that doesn't have a resistor. I could turn that on. And again, this resistance is going to be critical in understanding how these turn on correctly in the um, when the power goes out. Well, I think that covers everything that I wanted to cover for this first part. I hope you've enjoyed seeing what goes on inside of these bulbs. It is interesting that there's two completely different sets of LEDs, one for the battery power and one for um, the 110 voltage. Um, and now that you understand how they come on, I think this little resistor is going to make more sense when I do the next demonstration. Um, I've decided to do that as another video, so that kind of gets us to the end of this one. I hope you've enjoyed it, and um, yeah, if you have, um, leave me some comments. If you have questions, leave me some comments, and I'd be happy to jump in there and answer those for you, and I'll see you um, in our next video.